Do you get really, really angry when your child forgets what you have taught them? So you've spent an hour yesterday teaching them something and which they need for school the next day. But when the time comes for them to go to school and you ask them just before that, they've forgotten everything. It can be so frustrating, right? And then they go to the exam, you've taught them thoroughly and yet they forget and they don't write in the exam and they come back and they haven't got the marks. So that can be really, really frustrating. It can make you angry. It can make you shout at your child, sometimes even hit your child. Now, what's the solution? The solution, of course, is to increase your child's memory power so that your child can remember better and not forget what they need to remember in the class or in the exam. So memory is a very important thing. I'm not talking about rote learning here. Even if you're not a rote learner, you need to remember things. After all, learning is about remembering. You don't remember word for word, but you need to remember. So this is really, really important for us to understand. All those who say you don't need memory power, you need to only understand even after you understand you need to remember. So it's very, very important to build your child's memory, to help your child expand their memory and also give your child's memory depth. Expand it so that they can remember more things and give it depth so that they remember more of each topic that they study. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about how you can use neuroscience to build your child's memory. Understand that learning is completely neuroscience. You need to understand what's happening in the brain to maximize the power of the brain. I'm Dr. Dev Mathadatta. I am an expert in the neuroscience of learning. And in my on my channel, I talk about how you can use neuroscience to make parenting easier. So of course, one of the biggest tasks in parenting is to teach children and make them capable. Today, I'm going to tell you five ways to increase your child's memory power so that they remember more and they can do better in their exams. So here we go. So the first thing we must remember about memory is that memory is about repetition. We sometimes get really, really angry when children forget. But why do they forget? They forget because when you teach them the first time, one neural connection is made. And in a few hours, when the neural connection is not used again, when your child is sleeping or playing, the neural connection breaks. Now, in order to really remember something, your child needs seven repetitions of the same thing. So your child needs to repeat something seven times in order to remember it. Now, of course, it is important to remember and to repeat it immediately, but it's also important to remember and repeat it after a gap. So say you've taught your child seven sevens are 49. Now, what's the way to remember it? You will tell your child, repeat, seven sevens are 49. So you go, seven sevens are 49, seven sevens are 49, seven sevens are 49. You say this seven times and the child remembers, but the child remembers then in the moment. When the child goes away, the child plays, the child goes to school, comes back, sleeps, eats, and so on and so forth. These seven repetitions no longer work because the memory that was formed because of these immediate seven repetitions is lost. Now, what do you need to do? You need to make your child repeat things after a gap of time. So your child, give your child some time. So say you've taught them seven sevens are 49 today. Tomorrow morning, make them repeat seven sevens are 49 seven times. 
again after two days go back and ask them what seven sevens and repeat seven sevens are 49 do this after intervals of time so on the second day on the fifth day on the 14th day and so on and so forth at longer and longer gaps that will help your child to really move the information from the short-term memory to the long-term memory and therefore remember better now uh, how should you recall and where should you recall? So I've told you the intervals of time at which you should recall. I've told you how many times you should recall something. But here's an important tip. Don't always make your child sit and study at their desk and chair. Yes, when they're learning the first time, they should be sitting on their desk, at their desk, on their chair and so on. But when you're doing a revision, do it in different places. So you can do it while you're driving in the car. You could do it while you're in the park. You could do it uh, while you are going for a run. You could do it while taking a bath, you know. So the more uh, the different places that have a huge impact on the brain, the more variety of places that you can revise in, the more your child is likely to remember something better. Right. So the impact of the place is huge. Also, you know, when you're trying to tell somebody to remember something, they're, of course, going to be very, very nervous about what, whether they're going to forget or not. Now, uh, the solution to this is, of course, when they're nervous, they will forget more. Now, what's the solution to the solution is for you to recall with them. So say if you're doing the seven times table, you say, I'll say seven fives, you say seven sixes. Then I'll say seven sevens, you say seven eights. So do it like this once and then do it the other way. So they're saying one the thing that you said last time and you are saying the thing that they said last time. So by doing this, you're making it fun. You're taking away the stress from the situation and you're making it much easier for your child. So this is about repetition. This is the first point. If you want to improve your child's memory, you must focus on these different things when you're doing repetitions. The second way to improve your child's memory is to make them teach you something. So we remember best what we need to teach most, right? So if you have to teach something, you will have to remember it thoroughly. So make your child teach you what they have learned. So this is a beautiful exercise. Children typically love it because it gives them the chance to be the person in control, the teacher as such. It also improves their communication skills. So it's not just, you know, getting marks is not just about learning the topic and putting it in your mind. It's also about taking out the information, putting it in the right words, in the right way, such that they get marks. So when a child has to teach something, the child will automatically need to build their organization skills they will have to organize the information in their brain they will also need to communicate the information in the right way right so these two will automatically help them to use what they already remember it will also help them to build their memory because they have to now teach and teachers don't teach from books so they wouldn't like to bring their book and so you can help them to learn give them a whiteboard and a marker and if they make some mistakes don't make a big deal out of it um correct it gently check in the book make a uh, you know an attempt to teach it again and so on in addition, what happens when a child teaches is that their self-esteem rises. A lot of ch times children forget because they are so anxious, they are so worried. The anxiety actually prevents them from remembering what they already know. Now, when they teach you, they feel like the teacher, their self-esteem goes up, their confidence goes up, and this increases their chance of remembering better.
So this improves their memory. So teaching is a very effective way of learning. The third way to improve memory is to draw. So children always remember more when they see something rather than when they hear something and of course they remember much more when they do something so when a child draws the child automatically is seeing and doing so this improves the child's memory considerably so whenever the child learns something ask them to keep a pen in their hand and to go on doodling whatever they think they are listening to and what they're understanding. Once they have finished uh, doing, uh, you know, learning what they have learned, give them a whiteboard and a marker and let them draw whatever they have already learned. So suppose they have learned the parts of the plant, let them draw a plant and draw out the parts of the plant. Now there will be mistakes, so initially give them an eraser and give them the freedom to correct their mistakes. So mistakes are a great learning opportunity. Don't scold them for the mistakes. It's on the whiteboard. It's easy to clean. Just give them a eraser so that they can erase it, correct it and learn the correct version. Now when your child has actually learned the correct version, after that, go and tell them to draw it on a paper. And then take this paper and stick it in the house where they will keep looking at it repeatedly. This will strengthen their memory because they'll keep seeing it. So, you know, um, you tell me what's the, uh, what is the Coke logo, right? It's not that I've learned it, but because I've seen it so much, I will definitely be able to tell you what it's like. So what you see more, you will remember more. So seeing and drawing is a great way of increasing your child's memory. The fourth way to increase your child's memory is to give them real life examples. So for example, if you're teaching your child about photosynthesis, let them actually look at photosynthesis in the context of the plant that they're growing in their balcony or actually help them to plant something you know actually grow something from a seed and see photosynthesis in action there are several experiments usually in every book that um, uh, you know children are supposed to do but they never do they just learn it by heart so Doing, connecting something to something in real life is always very, very important for making a child remember something. So if we have never seen something, never heard of something, we're going to forget it immediately. But if we think, oh, this is just like that, we'll be like, ha, ah, okay, it's easy to remember. So for example, if you have never seen spaghetti, so you go back and there is a name, there is something that you've eaten, but you don't know what it is. But as soon as you connect it to noodles and you say, hey, this is noodles, but this is a thicker form of noodles, the information sticks in the brain. So you're sticking the new information to some old information by showing the child that these two things are similar. So giving examples is a beautiful way for the child to remember things long term and not forget. The fifth way to increase your child's memory is to summarize what, what they have studied. So usually a chapter is long. It's, it spans five, six pages right and nobody can hope to read five six pages seven times and i said that you know to really remember something you have to revise it seven times but no one can do it so it's impossible to read big thick books so for example when we do medicine we have huge textbooks to study and there's no way to read everything seven times so it's very important to read something and then to summarize it to make it small to make it rememberable. So at first you remember the headings, then you start remembering one point under each heading, then you remember two points under each heading and so on and so forth. And that's how you expand your child's memory. So you give your child something very small to remember and then you keep putting points under it. What happens in this is that 
if the memory is this big because the summary is so small you can put many things into the memory at once and none of these will then get forgotten because they're all small so they don't fall out of the memory when the memory overflows you can actually put them all in so the fifth way is a very important way summarize everything such that your child can remember so if you've been struggling with the memory type memory in comments right now so that your child's memory gets boosted your child's memory expands and your child remembers everything that they have studied whenever you teach your child remember that learning is completely neuroscience and if you teach your child with neuroscience in mind your child will always remember more i am dr devnata data and i talk about the neuroscience of learning and parenting with neuroscience on my youtube channel subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon when you subscribe so that you receive a notification whenever i post a new video if you have a child between 0 to 7 years you must understand the neuroscience of learning so that you can give them solid foundations such that they become self learners later i do a course called the parenting blueprint for the first 7 years i'm linking to the course in the caption do check it out and if you are a parent of a child between 0 to 7 years definitely do that course it will help you tremendously because it teaches parenting with neuroscience which makes parenting easy effective and enjoyable so subscribe now hit the bell icon and i will see you in the next video thank you